Hello, greetings, and welcome. I'm Ryan Posey, and in this video, I want to show you how to use PowerShell to navigate the Windows file system. Now, the really interesting thing about using PowerShell for file system navigation is that there are two different ways to do it. And the reason why there are two different ways has to do with the history of Windows. Because long before Microsoft ever created Windows, there was another Microsoft operating system called DOS, or Disk Operating System, as DOS stood for. Now, DOS was a very primitive operating system, and it was entirely command line based. And as you can imagine, there were commands that existed way back then for navigating the file system. And a lot of those commands still exist in Windows today, purely for backward compatibility reasons. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So to start out, rather than opening up PowerShell, I'm going to open up the Windows command prompt. So to do that, I'm going to right click on the start button. I'll go to run and I'll type CMD and click OK. And this opens the Windows command prompt window. So we're not in PowerShell, we're in an entirely different environment that predates PowerShell called the Windows command prompt. And the vast majority of the DOS functionality exists in the Windows command prompt. So if, for example, we wanted to drop down to the users folder, whereas right now we're in the users Brian folder, we could type CD dot dot. And that would drop us down a level. And if I wanted to go back to the Brian folder, I could type CD Brian. So that's just a really quick example of how we used to navigate the file system in the days of DOS. Now, a lot of this DOS functionality still exists in PowerShell today. Now, everything in PowerShell doesn't work exactly as it did in the days of DOS, but I would say 90 to 95% of the DOS file system navigation capabilities still exist in PowerShell. So let's take a look at what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead and close out the Windows command prompt. And I'm going to switch over to PowerShell. So here we are in a PowerShell environment. And the first thing that I'm going to do is exactly what we did a moment ago. Just drop down to a different level. I'll type CD dot dot. And then the first DOS type command that I want to show you besides CD is DIR. Now, if you're wondering what CD stood for and what DIR stood for, well, in the days of DOS, a folder was known as a directory. So the DIR command is the directory command. It shows you the contents of the current folder. So let me type DIR and press Enter. And you can see the current folder or directory's contents. Now, the CD command that I've been using a few times stands for change directory. So you can type cd dot dot and that drops down to a lower level directory. So let's go ahead and drop down to the root. I'll type cd dot dot. And I just want to show you a few DOS style commands that you can use to navigate the file system. So I already showed you the dir command. The next thing that I want to show you is how to create a folder or a directory in the style of DOS. The way that you would do that is using the MD command. So I'll type MD, and that stood for make directory, and then space, and then the name of the folder that you want to create. In this case, I'll create a folder called folder1. And I'll press enter, and that folder has been created. So if I wanted to navigate to that folder, I would use the CD or change directory command once again, and type CD, and then the name of the folder, folder1, and there I am. So we can also create subfolders in this way. So if I wanted to create a subfolder called folder2, I would type md for make directory, and then the name of the folder, folder2, and press enter. And so now I've created a folder called folder2. So if I wanted to move into that folder, I would type cd folder2. Now, I mentioned earlier that PowerShell has adopted a lot of the navigational commands that existed in DOS, but that it's not a 100% perfect representation. So let me show you what I mean. As you've already seen, if you want to drop down a file level, you type cd dot dot. So with that said, let me go back into folder 2. And of course, I made a typo. Let me go back into folder 2, cd folder 2. Now, in the days of DOS, you could append extra periods to the CD command to drop down multiple levels of the file structure. So if I wanted to drop all the way down to the root, I could type CD dot dot and then add an extra period. 
but this doesn't work in PowerShell. If I press enter, I get an error message. So if you want to drop down multiple levels, there are two ways of doing it. You can type cd dot dot and press enter and do that multiple times, just as we've been doing, or you can type cd backslash and press enter, and that will drop you all the way down to the root folder. Now, what about removing folders? Well, let me go ahead and go back up a folder level. So I'll type cd folder one, and then I'll enter the dir command to see what's in that folder, which we already know what's in that folder, but just for the sake of demonstration, I'll type dir, and we can see that this folder is empty aside from one subfolder called folder two. Now, if I wanted to delete that folder, then what I would do is I would type rd, which stands for remove directory, and then the name of the folder, and press enter. And now if I type dir again, we can see that that folder is gone. And if I drop down to the root directory, and repeat the command on folder one, that folder is gone as well. So that's just a really quick demonstration of the DOS way of doing things in PowerShell. So what about PowerShell style navigation? So all of the DOS style commands that I've shown you exist as aliases to PowerShell commandlets. So let's take a look at what that looks like. PowerShell actually has a hidden drive called the alias drive. And the way that you would access that alias drive is to type set location and then alias colon. And when I do that, you'll notice that the PowerShell prompt changes from C colon to alias. So now we're in PowerShell's hidden alias drive. So the reason why I did that is because I wanted to show you how you can use the get item commandlet to find the actual PowerShell commandlet that corresponds to various aliases. So let me show you how that works. One of the commands that we've used a lot so far in this video is CD, but CD is actually an alias. So if I wanted to find out what the PowerShell equivalent to the CD command is, I could type get item and then CD and I press enter. And what we see is that CD is an alias for the PowerShell set location commandlet. So let's look at a few more. Another command that I've used is dir. So if we type get item, followed by dir, and press enter, you can see that dir is a PowerShell alias for the get child item commandlet. Let's look at a couple more. This time I'll type get item and md. That was the command that we used to create a folder. And let's do one more. I'll type get item and then rd. rd is the remove directory command. And we can see that rd is an alias for remove item. So with that said, let's take a look at how to navigate the file system using only PowerShell commandlets. And I'll do roughly the same thing that I did using the DOS style commandlets. So with that said, let me switch back over to the C drive, and I do that just by typing C colon and pressing enter. And so now we're in the root folder of C. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create a folder called folder one, just as we did before. And the way that I do that is by using the mkdir command, followed by the folder name. I'll press enter, and the folder has been created. Now, to access that folder, we need to use the set location command. So I'll type set location, and then the name of the folder, and press enter. And so now we're in that folder that we just created. And if I want to drop down to the root directory, then what we can do is we can type set location, followed by the backslash. Now, when we use the CD command, the backslash was right up against the CD. But being that we're using set location, we actually have to have a space before the backslash. So I'll type space and then backslash and press enter. And that's going to drop us down to the root folder. So let's go ahead and create another subfolder. So I'm going to type set location folder one. And then I'm going to create a subfolder called folder two. So now I'm going to type mkdir and then folder two. And so now folder two has been created. And if I want to access that folder, then I would use the set location command once again. And I'll change this from folder one to folder two. And now we're in folder two. 
Now we can also use set location with the two periods to drop down a folder level just as we did with CD, but once again we have to put a space in there. So the way that we would do this is to type set location and then a space and then dot dot. And I'll press enter. And so now we've dropped down to folder one. Now let's take a look at the process of removing a folder. So I'm going to go ahead and delete folder two. And the way that we do that is to use the remove item commandlet. And then I'll type the name of the folder. And so the folder has been removed. Now you'll notice that we don't get any visible output. So we need to check the contents of this folder. And the way that we do that is with the get child item commandlet. So I'll type get dash child item and press enter. And we can see that folder one is indeed empty. And if you want to see get child item actually produce some visible results, what I can do is type set location and then backslash, and that's going to take us to the root folder. And then I'll repeat the get child item commandlet. And now we can see the contents of the root folder. So now let's go ahead and get rid of folder one. And so to do that, I'm going to use remove item and I'll change this to folder one. So folder one has been deleted now. And if we repeat the get child item commandlet, we can see that folder one no longer exists. So those are just some techniques that you can use to navigate the Windows file system using PowerShell.